Hello, hello, and welcome to today's very special 500 subscriber Q&A video, as promised. Thank you to everyone who submitted a question. I really appreciate it. Uh, and we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, but a disclaimer, if I pronounce your username incorrectly, please let me know in the comments how to properly pronounce it. And also, you now know my deep dark secret, I need to wear glasses when working on a computer. Let's get started. Uh, so first question is from at Bob NG. Uh, how did you discover your love for board games and general D&D RPG games? What is that one element that you can always think of as to why you love those games? Excellent question. Uh, so we'll take the, the first one. How did you discover your love for board games? Um, honestly, growing up, I always enjoyed, you know, family game night. We played the classics, Monopoly, Knife, Clue, uh, Mousetrap. Uh, but Clue was always my favorite, and I liked that it had a mechanic beyond simply roll a dice, move that many steps, do what the square tells you to do. You know, the way life is very... There's no strategy to it here. It's complete luck. Whereas with Clue, there actually was some strategy. You had to figure out what was the best combination of questions to ask people. You know, you're discovering and investigating, and that was always really fun for me. We also had this game. I don't know how it came into our collection, and I don't know where it is today. But it's called Village of Fear. Let me know in the comments if you've even heard of this game. Um, but it was, if I remember correctly, one player was the evil warlord, and everyone else was, I guess, a group of adventurers. It was sort of like D&D-esque. Um, but yeah, there was a literal village, so cardboard 3D buildings, and you'd go to visit each one, and you'd get supplies, or there was a key somewhere, I don't know, somehow you had to make your way to the castle to fight the bad guy. I don't know that as children we ever played it correctly, but that one was fascinating, and for the most part, we just enjoyed playing with the the village and the minis and everything else. Um, but yeah, board games have just always been part of my life. But then as an adult, you know, Monopoly is terrible. So although we would still play it because I like board games, it was I was missing something. Um, and then the king of the nerds, Will Wheaton, had his tabletop show on YouTube, and once I discovered that, binged it, you know, watched the final season as it was airing, and once that was done, I knew, like, this was it. I needed to try some of these games. And yeah, we started with Catan, uh, Pandemic, Betrayal at House on the Hill, and Munchkin were our first four games and we played them non-stop. It was awesome. But then, yeah, we just really fell down the rabbit hole of new games, new games, playing them, falling in love with them, and now I have a board game wall. <laughs> I'd say whoops, but I'm quite proud of this. And the other... The other question is, what is the one element that you can always think of. Oh no, sorry, there was also a how did you get into D&D. &D. Um, some of the games that we had, 
are Dungeons and Dragons themed, like Lords of Waterdeep. So we kind of always had that in the back of our minds of, yeah, well, we'll try D&D someday. Uh, but then a close friend of ours plays D&D and invited us to a session. Uh, we, we tried a couple groups, like, with this same couple, and those groups sort of fell through. But then last year, maybe, maybe a year and a half ago, we officially started a new campaign. We play every two weeks, and it's been fantastic. So the other question was, what is that one element that you can always think of as to why you love those games? And for me, I think it comes down to strategy. So, you know, those old games when you're kids, like I said, you roll the dice, you do what the dice says. It's just so much luck based. So when someone wins, it's like, did they win? <laughs> They didn't do anything to earn it, uh, but in these games, it's it's all about the strategy. Like when you win Catan, is there a better feeling in the world? I mean, sure, probably, but like it's up there. It's up there. Um, and board games for me eh, really help with like just social awkwardness. I'm really bad at small talk. But if there's a board game in front of us, we're all focused on the same thing, and especially if it's a co-op, you know, we're, we're strategizing, we're figuring things out, and it just really helps to channel, <laughs> channel my energy as I get lost in the game. Next question is from at Sasascuccia5471. Sasascuccia. Uh, can you suggest board or card games for adults that require thinking skills and don't take too long to play? Yes, but the first question is what do you consider as, as not too long? Um, so I'll kind of give you two answers. For the, you know, 15 to 30 minute uh, game time, I would go with, let's see if I can find it, here we go. Sushi Go. And... And Love Letter. So these, they're both card games, and they force you to make quick decisions, and they're played over multiple rounds, but the rounds go by really quickly, and while there's minimal luck involved, you know, it is, you know, the, the luck of the draw of the card, but then it's up to you to strategize use that card appropriately. Um, so yeah, they're super fast games, but like oddly competitive uh, and very strategic. So there's, you know, you can, if you're really crazy, you can like count the cards to know how many cards are left and what they might be. And uh, you know, uh, fantastic. And the setup is, I mean, there is no setup, right? It's shuffle the cards, deal them out, and you're ready to go. And it's not like, you know, pandemic, which it might be a 20 minute game if you lose quickly, but it takes a while to set up. Uh, there's no setup. So highly, highly recommend Sushi Go and Love Letter. But if you're thinking so long as it's under an hour, that's a quick game. Um, I'd go with Forbidden Desert. So that's about a 30 to 45 minute game. So the story of the game, if you haven't heard of it before, is uh, it's a cooperative game, first of all, and you're a group of adventurers who have crash-landed 
uh, in the Forbidden Desert. Now you have to go around the map to try to find the missing pieces of your flying machine so you can repair it and fly out of there. But the map is constantly changing. There's a big sandstorm and it's moving sand around. The sun is beating down so you're going against the clock. You need to find water lest you dehydrate. So lots of things going on and each character has their own special abilities. So you really need to maximize each character in order to come through and beat the game. So much fun, lots of thinking, a little bit of luck, but again, it's the type of luck that you then need to work with and figure out the best way to turn it to your advantage. So yeah, Forbidden Desert, Sushi Go, Love Letter. Those are my three strategy thinking games that aren't too long. Next question is from Sticky Icky Slapshot. Have you ever played alternatives to D&D? And if you have, what was your favorite system? Also, what is your D&D class and race? Um, so I have not played any other system besides D&D yet. Um, I did start watching Dimension 20 in this past year though, and they've played a system called Kids on Bikes, which looks really interesting. Um, I like that, uh, the idea of, you know, if you roll a d4 and it is a 4, the dice explodes and you get to roll it again and that adds to your score. I don't think I'd want to be the GM in that system. It must be really tricky to come up with the appropriate challenge ratings for any, you know, um, skill check. Uh, but to be a player might be a blast. So that'd be interesting. Um, and of course, Will Wheaton on Tabletop played uh, Fate Core. So that system definitely on the bucket list of ones to try. Um, are there any systems that you would recommend? Um, still feeling new to RPGs in general, so any recommendations, send them my way. And what is your TNT class and race? So I play a level 7 half-elf druid named Visenya. Um, she was, so her backstory is, she was a librarian, uh, and then her best friend came along and convinced her to join her on an expedition to get some hands-on research, you know, in the wild. But lo and behold, one night when they, you know, set up camp, the next morning they discovered that they were transported to Barovia. And so, yes, we are playing the Curse of Strahd campaign. No spoilers in the comments, please. Okay, our next question is from Game Night ASMR. If you were to theoretically make your own board game, what would it be like? Uh, first off, if you're not already following Game Night ASMR, uh, please do. <laughs> make sure you check out their channel. Uh, it's excellent. And if I made my own board game, it would have to be cooperative. I love co-op games so much. And the the mechanism that the board has a turn, like evil has to happen on the board and it, you know, ruins all of your carefully laid plans. Love that. Fantastic. So, you know, you think pandemic and after your turn, you have to flip the infection cards and infect more cities. Or, back to Forbidden Desert, the storm moves and changes the map. I love, love, love that mechanic, so I would have to incorporate that type of mechanism into mine as well. And I, I don't really know what the theme of it would be, but I would have to guess something like, definitely fantasy. But maybe something also cutesy, you know, anthropomorphic animals and the the evil 
bored as, you know, a, a cat vying for world domination. I am something that balances the seriousness of saving the world uh, with just plain fun and whimsy. And our last question is from at dfets3. How do you discover new board games slash RPGs that you might be interested in? Friends, online research, watching other YouTubers play them. Uh, so I definitely started with watching Will Wheaton's tabletop show. And as you can see from my beautiful wall, many of these games were featured on his show. But from there, uh, it would typically be friends coming over for game night and bringing a new game. We'd play it, fall in love with it, and next thing you know, I'm ordering it off of a website. <laughs> or rushing over to our you know, local game store to, to pick it up off the shelf. I also follow quite a few like board game players on Instagram. So I'll kind of see like a trend of everyone's playing the same game, so then I feel like I need to play that game. That's how I wound up with Wingspan. Uh, and some other ones too. What else did I get just because of... Uh... Actually, Sagrada was one that was on my list to buy because everyone was playing it on you know, Instagram. But uh, it ended up being gifted to us, so I didn't even have to buy it. Okay, technically Wingspan was also a gift, but I put it on my Christmas wish list, so, you know, that counts. Uh, and then I have a new friend who has over 400 board games. I, guys, I thought, I thought I was cool, okay? I have a wall of board games. She puts me to shame. 400. Goals. Absolute goals. Uh, but she let me peruse her stock and borrow anything I might like. So I actually have Gloomhaven, which is probably out of frame, uh, and Isle of Cats. I haven't had a chance to open either of those up yet, uh, but very excited for Gloomhaven. I don't think that'll make a good video. It's I think it's too big, but Isle of Cats, maybe? Uh, we shall see. Uh, so those were all of my, all the questions that I received. You may be curious uh, what dice I've been playing with this whole time as a cute gift for reaching 500 subscribers. Uh, one of my players in the D&D uh, &D group where I'm the DM, uh, we only get together a few times a year, but it's always fun when we do. We happen to be playing last week, so... So she got me these GM dice. They basically just randomize different events, so I don't have to think of them. You know, there's the, the weather die. Oh, sunny. What else? Rainy, stormy, overcast, windy. Um, and then this one here is all about uh, loot. So, you know, you've maybe you've come upon some treasure. I would just give it a roll. And they found medium small loot. So just something that can help me determine what they get. Let's see, this one here uh, is the different types of damage. So we've got poison, slash, sonic, lightning. You know, you're in a dungeon and there might be traps here and there. Is it a snare? Did you come across a pit? Cold, just a cold patch. So let's see what else do we have. These purple ones here. Ooh, this is the like 
encounter difficulty. So you've you know, a chance encounter on the road, and it will be ooh, special. Something special needs to happen. But it could be, you know, an innocent encounter, no encounter, easy, uh, medium. Uh, this other purple one. Oh, so this would be something the GM would roll behind the screen to see what type of encounter, meaning will it be a friendly encounter, uh, a surprise, attack, um, uninterested, unaware. So yeah, just some things to... Oh, here's one for the... Uh, NPCs, will they be welcoming, pleasant, uh, available, uninterested, angry? <laughs> There's one that says miserable. <laughs> Cute. Uh, this pink one is about the types of damage, so stunned. Um, let's get bone broken, armor damaged. And then, uh, okay, what do we have here? These ones are directional, so it'll be like upper, lowest, uh, central, bottom most. I'm sure that'll come in handy somehow. Uh, and these two hilarious die are different body parts. So it would be like, if you got dismembered, what body part came off? Was it your right arm? Um, is it ooh, uh, a wing? If you're the kind of creature that has a wing. Um, so I, I also love that the icons are like blood red. Fantastic. But they also, they're just such a big die. And I love the sound they make. Thank you so much, everyone. I still can't believe we cracked 500 subscribers. That is really cool. Thanks for being here, for sticking around, for enjoying my weird niche <laughs> YouTube creation here. Um, and yeah, let's see if we can make it to a thousand. Why not? Uh, if you don't know what to comment down below, tell me what D&D or RPG character that you play. Um, and if you don't play any TTRPGs, what's your favorite board game? Nice and simple. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I need to figure out what game I'm going to play next. Uh, we'll go back to doing a normal, you know, let's play in the next episode. So can you, uh, if you can see my board game wall, do you have any suggestions? I know there's a solo variant of Wingspan. I haven't played it solo yet, but I am interested. Uh, so maybe I'll give that a, a test whirl. And uh, maybe Wingspan will be the next video. Uh, but until then, you know, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're not part of my 500, give me hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Sweet dreams.